use a different quotation mark, a single quotation mark, straight facing downwards next to your enter key. Stata is incredibly particular about this, and I actually wasted half an hour today because I had this typographical problem, which I'll tell you about in a bit. But be very careful. You have to use these two characters. You can't just use quotation marks, and you can't use things that face the same way. So numerator <coughs> divided by the denominator, the classic uh, definition of a fraction. Same thing, start with the quotation mark this way, apostrophe this way, and start with, and then end with the uh, straight down mark. Were these just incredibly anal programmers? This is a relic, uh, as I explained last time, about, of the C++ sort of programming language. This is the 10th iteration of Stata. So there have been a lot of changes since then, but this is simple. It's also something that's exclusive in that these characters aren't used for anything else. So is it cool? Of course not, but it's like learning new languages. Quite obnoxious in the beginning. So this is the fraction uh, of mothers who were 25 years old when they gave birth in, in uh, 2002. Let me just point one more thing out to you. Um, you can also make SATA display text. And the way you do that is with double quotation marks, which is why Stata was so particular. You can display text with double quotation marks, so it'll output that way, and with these single quotation marks, you can do the rest. This is just being fancy. This leads up to what we're going to do at the end of today's session, creating a do file. Does anybody have any questions about instead of just using numbers, plugging in variables on how to get the system R class variables. <clears throat> Excellent. So as you'll notice on page four, there are three examples, some of which may or may not be drawn from problem set one if you're in quantitative methods one. If so, try them out on your own. If we have time today, which I don't think we will, you can go back and uh, we'll do some, but I don't think we'll have time. So there are answers in appendix B. So try these out. You should be able to do these based on everything I've just talked about. Um, now, so what I want to talk about now, now that we sort of learn how to um, do calculations within Stata, is how to keep track of your work. What I want to point out to you is that there are two ways to do this. There is what's called a log file and what's called a do file. And I'm going to explain what a log file is first and then move on to the do file, which is going to be sort of culmination of the first two days of this workshop. So what the log file does is to keep track of everything you type in and everything Stata outputs. So that if you're on a mission to sort of find out an equation or a model that works for a process you're looking uh, to capture in your research, a log file is oftentimes a good way to do things if you don't want to take the time to really logically think about what steps you're going to write out. You want to try a bunch of different regressions, try a bunch of different things. Um, it can get pretty messy if you run it for too long, but it's a great way to think about your work without fearing that state is going to close, my computer's going to crash, and nothing will be saved. So. Um, Let's just start using a log file right now. And the way to do that is on the bottom of page four, you can see that the command is the log using command. So again, it's the same command for log using file name. I'm just gonna call this workshop one example, txt. And after the comma, as with everything else, there are options you can specify. The default Stata option is some proprietary log technology that only Stata can read. So use text format so that anybody can read it. You can send it anywhere. This is also the preferred mode of sending in homework assignments with the text option. And I'm using text replace because I have a new um, file already. Better? Much better. Um, so now the log file is on. And until we turn it off, if you turn over to page 5, there are three things you can do with log files. You can pause it. The command is log off. You can restart it, log on after you close after you've stopped it, and close out uh, the command using log close, which stops the logging, and you have to re you have to call the log command back up to do it again. So, what we're going to do now uh, to sort of practice with the log function is to create a dummy variable, and we did that last time. So let's just review how to do that. This is with the generate and replace commands. What we're going to do is create two dummy variables: one for teenage mothers, mothers. Uh, under the age or including the age 19, and then mothers who are older, 35 and over. So let's do the first one.
Makes sense. Anybody want to tell me what the next command coming up is? Just look on the worksheet and tell me. <clears throat> Placing and how are we sort of thinking through this? We're basically trying to define whether a value is taking on a one or a zero. And so if it's a teenage mom, it takes on the value of one. If it's a not teenage mom, it takes on a value of zero. And so you're defining the not teenage mom as when it's older than 19. Excellent. That's absolutely right. So let's do the same thing for um, older mom. Greater than or equal to 35. Greater than or equal to is important. You want to make sure you capture 35. Why do you have to use replace? Um, you have to use replace because Stata This is a new variable, right? Yes, we're creating, we've created a new variable. So you use replace because the generate command here creates a new row of teenage mom. And the generate command makes it fill in, sorry, it should be one. One every time the age of the mom is less than 19. And you can't use the generate command again because Stata tries to fill in a whole new variable. It sees that there's a variable here and says, I can't do that. So if, why would, I'm sorry, I may have been being stupid, but why wouldn't the first generate command only fill them in if the mom is less than or equal to 19? That is, I'm sorry, that is what it's doing. So you'd be a better sense of what this is. It's on the generate command, say the mom age is 18, 24, 12, 16, 54, 37. So when you do the first generate command, what happens is it starts to fill down the field for age of mom less than equal to 19. Is that yeah, less than equal to 19? Yes. Less than equal to 19? No. Missing. Less than equal to 19? No. Yes. So it's replacing the missing. Yeah. So well, it doesn't necessarily replace the missing. You're forcing it to do that by telling it to then again check. Yeah. And the replace command you should know will overwrite one of these variables, uh, this value, this observation. If you were to write say greater than or equal to 19, then it go back, and every 19 would be overwritten yeah. to zero. So be careful on your specifications because it'll loop back over and write in the zeros. So that's how the generate and replace commands work together. I put a table here. There you go. So let's check out the means and standard deviations for um, two things we've generated here. Now, just for fun, let's just see what the log file's been doing. Um, I'm only going to do this once. I just want you to see um, sort of what the log file output looks like. So this is what this is everything we've been typing in, and it records all the commands and all the responses to the commands. As you can see right here, I messed it up. There's a typo. I didn't put if, and it records that. So you should just know that it could get pretty messy if you're just sort of typing in willy nilly and uh, things like that. So. What you should know is at the at what you really want to do is to combine this with a do file. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So we've now seen the means for these new dichotomous uh, dummy variables we've created, and the one exercise that we should do to make sure we understand um, exactly how uh, not only these variables work but also how to use the state of calculator is let's just try and compute the fraction of teenage of 19-year-old or fewer mothers and see how that compares with the dummy variable we've created. Yes, Christina? If you wanted to start the log file again, mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't use